Um, and of course, in our conversation tonight, as I told you, we're dealing with the topic of legal recognition of the intersex people. Of course, as a gender, um, particularly when it comes to registration, um, Gloria Ruhunga is there uh, with us tonight and in also a researcher as well as laban chariot the deputy director of public education uh, that is the kenya national commission on human rights both of you are very much welcome and let's have this conversation but probably uh, gloria to start us off yes. um probably as our case study in this conversation pain for us you growing up to adulthood to the point at which now you are in advocacy some of the challenges that you faced as a person Thank you mm. for this opportunity. You're welcome. Um, firstly, when an intersex person is born, mm. they start facing challenges immediately after birth. Mm. Because you see in terms of uh, registration, we are wrongly documented, like female or mm. male, when mm. we are intersex persons. Mm. There comes documentation. Again, when you go to s primary school, we are trapped in the wrong sexes you know you are mm. still called male male or female mm -hmm. so when an intersex person grows up they f they encounter stigma and discrimination from fellow students mm. they want to know are you a boy or a girl mm. when i was in primary I used to play only with boys i've never played with girls so mm. people you, my fellow students used to ask me why are you only playing with boys why are you working in a company of boys so i acquired this name tomboy when i was still in primary school mm -hmm. when i came to secondary the challenges escalated. Why? Uh, my mother, my late mother, she used to take me to traditional healers. She used to believe that through prayers I would be healed and uh, maybe one day she my sex... She didn't see you as a normal child? No, she used to see me as a normal child, mm. but she used to believe that when preachers pray to me, I will, the, my sex will change. But nevertheless, it never changed mm. until she died in, when I was in Form 1. Mm. So in secondary, Form 1, I would, form one I was a day scholar. Mm. From two, I was a bo in boarding school. Mm. Imagine being in a dormitory of girls. Each time in the morning, I, I used to wake up very early in the morning to go take a shower before others wake up. Or if we wake up at the same time, I used to go to the bathrooms with everything. My skirt, my footer, everything, and the dress from the bathroom, mm. you see. And another challenge in secondary is that, uh, you know, schools, when they open and close, we used to be, there was this activity undertaken, pregnancy test. Imagine I'm, a, I'm an intersex person, but they used to run pregnancy tests on me because they used to believe I'm a girl. What? Because I used to have small boobs, you know, mm. they are not seen, so people used to see. Even when I used to play football, they used to suspect me each time I used to score a goal. They used to say, no, this is a boy, the school has bought a school ID for this boy to play for this school so that the school can... I perform well in sports. Mm. So I had challenges in secondary sports. When it comes to GNC, the GNC teacher used to call me. They tried to persuade me to open up, but mm. I never opened up mm. because I had fearing if I tell the teachers, they will tell my fellow students I might be expelled out of the school. Mm. So I never shared, rather opened up when I was in secondary. Mm. After that, now I have finished secondary, I want to dwell into employment. Mm. Now you see, when I was growing up, everything was changing because I was raised as a girl for 20 years. Mm. Now, after being raised as a girl, after secondary, now everything started changing. Now the, do the manifestation of the dominant sex came out to be male. Now, each time I went to look for jobs, people used to say, no, why are you giving us the ID, identification that reads Gloria, Luhunga, yet you look like a boy. I learned that my first job to learn it in here in Nairobi was a house girl. Mm. It went well for one and almost two years. Though the challenges I had that, that, that my female boy used to speculate me so much. She used to observe me, everything I used to do, to an extent that I <laughs> You see? Yeah. So we have limited opportunities when it comes to employment mm. because of the uh, conflicting uh, uh, conflict between our legal documents and our bio biological appearance. Mm. When it comes to health, we have limited access to the medical services. They are very expensive. Intersex persons cannot afford them. Mm. You see? Even the NHIF is not friendly to us. The services that the NHIF can cover for, mm. Mm. They, they, not, they do not cater for the needs of intersex persons. All right. Yes. Okay. You know, um, Laban, borrowing from, because those are the challenges we have now a case study in studio telling us, you know, some of the things they've gone through. And I'm sure she's not painted all of them. 
when it comes to the reforms you're seeking in the law, particularly with this bill, is it as simple as this is it? It is male, female, intersex. Is it that simple? Uh, thank you very much. It's not that simple. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, uh, the, from the problems and challenges that uh, intersex persons go through, mm -hmm. Uh, of course, uh, we'll begin from where you said, by acknowledging as a country that we have to move from a binary uh, uh, fashion mm. where we have only male and female, and now introduce actually the third sex marker, which is called the intersex marker. Mm -hmm. I think I would like to clarify that it's yes. not the gender marker, mm. it is the intersex marker, it is the sex marker. And so we, uh, after we now advocate for the same, now it has a ramification in many other uh, laws, existing laws. Mm. For instance, we may need to change now the Registration of Persons Act, uh, the Registrar of Births and Deaths Act, so that, uh, remember when you go to school, you, it's either, even in the, in the register, it is either male mm. or female. Mm. When you go to hospital, it's either male or female. So we'd like to introduce the intersex uh, marker, mm -hmm. as intersex sex marker as the third marker. Mm. And I think we have moved uh, as a country beyond uh, that, that in the, in the census of 2019, there was a, uh, the intersex persons were counted in the country and we had a total of 1,524. Those who managed to come out mm, at that time. Mm, mm. And so it's not just a, a question of, uh, we begin with the intersex marker, but then we now have to change the other existing laws. Look at education, for instance. Uh, you recall uh, if you were, when you were in high school, you know, or other schools, the, the register says male or female. When you go to the toilet, it's either male, boys or girls, mm. or, or, or you're male or female students. And, and so where do, do you leave the intersex person uh, who, when they go to the other uh, facility, they are told, no, you don't belong here. When they go to the other facility, they are told, you, are not, you don't belong here. So the purpose of this uh, bill is mainly to ensure that we all uh, encompass and, and welcome and facilitate the intersex persons in this country to be able to enjoy the human rights that each and everyone enjoys. So it's not proper that, for instance, the right to the highest sustainable standard of health as provided for in our constitution, only belongs to male or female. Okay. We also should provide for the, the intersex persons in terms of uh, accessing medical, medical services, in terms of uh, being uh, protected from harmful, you know, uh, operations. You know, we have, uh, we have had so many cases of children who were operated on when they were young. Mm. And remember, uh, the body manifests itself from when you are young, when you go to puberty, and when you and in old age, in adulthood. Mm. So, for instance, can you imagine someone who probably may have been born with both genitalia, and then during uh, the operations, one of them was uh, interfered with. Mm. But by the time you get to puberty, this, the one that was interfered with now requires to come to life. Mm. So, so, so those are some of the things that we, th this bill will seek to, uh, to rectify so that we, all the intersex persons in this country enjoy their rights like the other uh, the other people all right uh, yes. gloria when it comes to the issues of advocacy mm -hmm. um because you're, you're talking about your experience probably even 20 years ago yes. as you push for this right is there a sense of understanding particularly from the stakeholders that are supposed to be involved in this process of what you're talking about the inclusion of intersex as a sex um in the recognition yeah firstly we, there is low level of awareness mm -hmm. among state officers and non-state officers, NGOs, CSOs, the public, community, society, mm. there is still low awareness. So we still have a lot of time to, to work on that. Mm. Yes. Mm. This, uh, the conversation, obviously, um, uh, Lebanon, I'm sure probably you have encountered it, and it goes to the conversation that is ongoing on, I don't know, gayism, lesbianism. Particularly when you talk about, um, because I've seen uh, the right to marriage, at that point, because that is also a right enshrined in the Constitution. Yes. How do you split uh, these two issues so that they do not appear the same in the public eye? Thank you for raising that, uh, Jacob, because mm. uh, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. there has been a confusion. And I think even, uh, even in social media, you may, have, you may have seen, there's a confusion between the LGBTQ mm. uh, movement and the intersex uh, and and the, 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 the attempt to fight for the rights of intersex mm. persons. Mm. And so then uh, the commission, uh, together with other stakeholders, are saying that uh, th they, are, they are distinct because the uh, intersex mm -hmm. condition is a condition that is acquired at birth. It is not a question of choice. Whereas LGBTQ mm. is a question of choice. Mm -hmm. So first of all, that's the, f that's the first area of departure. This is by birth, the other one is by choice. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, 
I, I, I agree with you that uh, the bill proposes that there'll be uh, the, the intersex persons also have a right to marriage. Okay. But the, the, the rider here is uh, so that you safeguard, you know, people who are not intersex. There's a requirement that the registrar of marriages will, will require of an intersex person to produce a, a, a medical report indicating the name of the person, the, the name of the intersex person, and the, and the intersex condition that, that they, they are in. And I, maybe, maybe if you would give me some time to distinguish a little bit about <laughs> the quickly, types yeah, of intersex. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, intersex is distinguished based on uh, f uh, four, uh, four categorizations. There is the anatomical, mm -hmm. that is the sexual organ. So the male or female, but then for an intersex person, uh, in the anatomical uh, co uh, distinction, uh, for the for the male we know it's the the, the penis for the for the for the women it is the, the vagina mm. but for an intersex person they could have both in different level of development the other distinction is what you call um, gonadal the gonads where we have the ovaries for 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 female mm. and the, and the testicles for male mm. an intersex person could have maybe one ovary and one testicle that way it is a complicated, you know, the third, uh, the third uh, variable is what you call hormonal uh, vari variation. We know that uh, male produce progesterone and female produce mm, estrogen. Mm -hmm. uh, male produce testosterone mm. and the female produce estrogen. Mm. You find that uh, an intersex person could be producing both in different measures. Mm. And finally, it is what you call the chromosomal. We know that uh, the XY chromosomes, for male is XY, for female is XX. You could find that, and they are, for, uh, they are 46. Mm. You could find that an intersex person has up to 47 or 48. And that's why we are saying that for you then to be able to access, for yourself to change your ID, to change your birth certificate, then you must be, uh, you must be go to a, a medical practitioner who will now say uh, intersex person so and so has this condition, which they have proved, so that then you will be able to distinguish, distinguish the intersex person from those who are not intersex persons. All right. Yes. All right. As we wind up very quickly, um, Gloria, um, some of the proof proposed in this bill and you will tell me because probably you're you you are involved in the formulation of this bill yes. i find some of them like will be very intrusive for example there's a medical report needed somewhere like you need to justify yourself at some point do you feel like that is intrusive i don't think because that's the only way that intersex will be recognized <laughs> but and again in that medical report we don't need much of the information just mm. my name gloria Lunga, my age mm. 28 mm. then my condition of autistic okay yes okay. only that all right yes so the bill is at what state now uh, we we have gone through a public participation as a commission, mm. but we have already had conversation with the uh, the justice and the justice and legal affairs uh, committee of the national assembly. Mm. And we, uh, once we conclude the the uh, mm. the views that we've collected from Kenyans, we'll now present it to the uh, justice and legal affairs committee, who will then now present it formally in parliament before now it comes back again for Kenyans to give their views through the normal public participation. Mm. So we hope that maybe in the f in the next month that process will, will kick off and we'll be able to have the bill introduced the first time in parliament and then it comes back for public participation mm. and then it goes back for eventually if possible passing and eventually signing uh, by the president can you come back after it has been tabled in parliament we hope so first time. we hope so if so you that we have us. that conversation probably in length yeah. exactly thank you very we much thank you that. very much for your time um uh, laban chariot as well as uh, gloria and of course we wish you all the best in the wonderful job you're doing thank you very thank much you. for thank coming you. tonight of course that's why we put a cup on uh, sunday express Thank you very much for your company. Have yourself a fantastic week ahead. God bless you. Good night.